Virginia Larson, uh, North and South editor, is with me as Good one morning. of our panellists this morning. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning. Good to have you in. And Bob Harvey, Good former morning. mayor of... Uh, a lot of people are introduced as what they formerly were. What are you currently? Well, I, well, I'm going to be the ambassador for Auckland, would you believe? It's a new job. I'm moving from Waterfront Auckland to... Uh, are you going to be paid out job? of the public purse for that job? I've always been paid out of the public purse, <laughs> like you. <laughs> It's but so I'll do true. a very good job. At least That's I'll so deliver true. something. Oh God! So this is another bloody job for the super city. Yeah, this but is it's another a, it's bloody an important job. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of uh, something that needs to be done. So what will you actually do? Well, investment really. I mean, there's some terrific parcels of things that we should be talking to foreign investors with. Oh, but why not? Um, you know, we've been we're buying uh, in, into a new future really. In all okay. Time. God, you're, More good about at the you're good at saying nothing, aren't you? Eh? There's true. a great parcel of, thi- parcel of things that we'll, well talk I used about. To be the mayor, you yeah, see. Exactly. So I'm, I'm used to it. But like, you're going uh, to be buying into the future. Oh, well, well, I want a slice of that. Actually. I used to be an ad man too. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. Um, all right, let's talk about. Well, this is right down your street, actually, um, Bob. Uh, the Jetstar a- announcement. It's like a Clayton's announcement. I mean, well, what the mayors will be delighted. I have to say. But delighted and so about what? Well, yes, but it's a bit like a piece of string. We, we, you can make it work, but at least they're hearing something. It's a lifeline Sorry, to some of those. It's a bit like a piece of string. Yeah, well, you, you don't know how long it or you don't, it will work. Right. Look, look okay. go with me. I think that this has been needed. A link. I mean, we're a small country in a way. We're long, but we're small. And we need to link and we need to be able to get around. This is, but, but I do think... We, we don't know. I mean, they're not going to choose any of these. I mean, what do you think about this, Virginia? That no. Jetstar are not going to go to any nook or cranny and be philanthropic. No. They just want to make money. Well, I, we've got a bit of a rodent theme happening this morning and I smell an Australian rat here, don't you? Mm. I mean, it's they're not they're not gonna pick up Fokatani, are they? No. So see, they, they I guarantee Kai Tyre, Jetstar will not be landing no. there. So what are they going to do? Just muscle in to the routes that are already presumably profitable the for profitable New Zealand. Ones. Yeah. 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 And if there's subsidies to be had I mean, will well, they be running around for okay, so this is, sweetness? This is interesting, isn't it? Again, from a council perspective, Bob, how do you subsidise one airline without offering the same subsidy to another? Oh, I would. I would subsidise these. If I was the, the mayor of Kaitaia or the mayor of Westport... Oh, it's different if you're, if you're trying to attract an airline in that wasn't there before. Yes. But you can't offer a subsidy for Jetstar if it's, if it's flying up against Air New Zealand, can you? Yes, I'd make that difference. I would. I would. Even if it was flying into the same airport with the same routes as Air New Zealand, you would subsidise one over the other? Yes, I would. How would you justify that? Uh, well, a lot of things can't be justified, but they're a bloody good idea and they make sense. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, don't you love that? I don't know. I a mean, lot of things can't be justified. No. You're going to be brilliant in this new role for all kinds. <laughs> like you. Are you? Um, all right, let's talk Colin Craig for a moment. Obviously, today is deus horribilis for Colin mm. Craig. He knows, he knows how to do horrible days. He's had some others. Um, do you imagine that he's going to survive this so-say coup? Well, is, is there more to come on Kooky Colin? I don't know. Mm. Um, it's There's obviously little deals have been done in the background, but... What have we got left? Christine Rankin and Garth McVicker? I mean... Mm. Well, OK, so what you've got is a board who are saying that that he hasn't been honest, or at least some of them are, but they're not Mm. saying what their individual names are. He hasn't been honest with them, and they think he's just a little bit crazy to be their leader. He's bringing them into disrepute. Was he always crazy? Well, Well, he was always crazy, you're right. So when did he become too crazy? In some way. I mean, the sauna thing is just crazy. I mean, I think Dancing with the Stars should be in a sauna myself. I mean, (laughs) mean, it's a a media idea. It's It's crazy. Quite a good idea, and I mm. guess you'll be in there sooner or later, Paul. But in know, the sauna or dancing with the stars, both, I would think. Yeah. Uh, but I think that the idea has my is, career come just, to that. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, <laughs> it has. Uh, but like former mayors. But the fact is that it's a media idea, and it's not a bad idea. But it's it's kind of crazy. Okay, here's. The, it, I mean, both of you know politics very well. Yeah. Is Colin Craig a liability as a politician? I would think so. I think so, but. You've got the Conservative Party, and without him, what have they got? Mm, that's a very good point. Without him, what have they got? Um, they certainly don't have him or his money. It's 22 minutes past eight. We're back with our panel in just a moment. I got bills. I got to pay. So I'm going to work, 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 work. Where can I decide to work? It's... Uh, 
8.26 on a Friday morning. Welcome back. This is Paul Henry throughout the country and indeed the world. Uh, Virginia Larson, North and South Editor, is with us on the panel. Good morning, Virginia, Good again. Good morning. Uh, and, of course, Bob Harvey, former Mayor of Waitakere. Um, very quickly, news just through John Kerwin. We were just talking about this before. Tana Umanga uh, has been appointed coach of the Blues, and John Kerwin, Jim, has called it quits. Yeah, that's what uh, certainly is being tweeted all over social media, that JK has called it a day. We're trying to get hold of him to confirm that. And uh, if it is confirmed, as we've reported already, Tana Umanga set to take over. So okay, so John, and, and as we were speculating just, what, 10 minutes ago, it's entirely appropriate that he should call it quits. You can't get Tana in and have him hamstrung with the old coach hanging around. And you can't continue as coach when you've only won three out of 16 games you this year. You just can't. It's extraordinary Not still there. No. Um, having said that, Bob, um, JK is a great guy. I think he's a he? great New Zealander, a fantastic man. But as they say, you don't uh, do that job for being a great guy. And uh, I think it's an end of a bit of an era, but uh, I wish him well. Yeah, I, I like you. I, I like I think him right, actually. It is the end of something of an era. And, and like you, I wish him well. And he'll go on to other things. I mean, like you, surely there are troughs around the place they can put his face in. And, and <laughs> There's always a good trough to come along. my money There's as a taxpayer. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll find something. I mean, surely the, the city of Auckland will have some bloody job they can give him, won't they? Well, a job for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. Co-ambassador, I love it. I'd take him on. Uh, of course you would. Of course you would, using my money. Um, all right, let's talk about this uh, thing at McDonald's. This is the South Auckland McDonald's, um, who are, to the best of my knowledge, right now still open, and they were certainly open when uh, Ash, when a customer, went there and found an infestation of mice in their play area. Virginia, how can it be possible that they remain open? Oh, it's dreadful. This is not a happy meal. This is a Mc- McBurger or it's dreadful. To they be honest, to be honest, if I was a little kid and I went in and had a happy meal and got a live mouse, I'd, I'd be pretty pleased they with that. They were inside. They're in the <laughs> playground, which means I think they released pets. Kids keep mice as pets. And mum and dad hate it because they stink and they breed and all that kind of thing. They take them to McDonald's, of course they do, and release them. Two of them were white, right? White mice, pet mice. <laughs> You I know crazy these. I, I you, know these things. You, so, but, so you know that parents take children with their mice to McDonald's yeah. to liberate them in the playground. Like they take the rabbit, rabbits, which they're sick of, out to the bush and let them go. And, and, right. and so, and if, kittens is and there cats. Not, you don't think there is a possibility that they were just there as vermin for the food? Mm, no. They're pets. It's South completely Auckland. out of the question. Yeah, so it's pets. entirely appropriate, in fact, that the McDonald's is still open. Yeah, pet release. OK, pet release project at McDonald's. Very nice. Right, um, finally, uh, Virginia, this idea, and it's come from someone who knows what he's talking about, clinical toxicologist uh, Paul Quigley, who's been quite high profile, mm. who has essentially said, and there's nothing new about this argument, pure ecstasy um, should effectively be legalised so that it can be controlled. Well, you know, this is you know, as you're sitting at home with your little glass of red wine and you think, well, you're going to pontificate on drug control. Actually, probably Quigley sees the carnage coming in mm. those mm. hospital doors. And I think the Drug Foundation head has pitched in with a similar message. So maybe... Maybe it's time for another discussion about decriminalisation. The problem is, what what Quigley is witnessing, Bob, of course, is exactly as you suggest, Virginia, he's at the coalface of the very worst excess of alcohol. He sees the abuse of alcohol, not just general alcohol intake. Yeah, and I think that you've got to realise that, that, that booze is a very serious problem in this country. Ask any cop. Mm. Um, drug use is probably small. Um, alcohol use and violence, domestic violence, all that kind of stuff. There'll be the people that say that the reason that drug use is small by comparison is the fact that it is just harder to get. Yes, it's, it's always been hard, but it's it's there. Mm. All right, um, Bob Harvey, good luck with the new job too. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you informed. Stay tuned. Virginia Larson, thank you so much thank for coming you. in. Great to have you both in. All right, it is... Eight-